All right, y'all, back again with another video. And as promised, I'm going to talk about um, the Pelicans and how they want to play. Um, now, I'm going to preface this by saying, no, I have not talked to anybody. All these thoughts are strictly my own, what I see and what I personally believe. No, I've not, you know, looked into tape on this necessarily, like, this is just my perspective from the roster in regards to the Lakers trio and Zion. I'm not including anybody else. It's just I'm because I'm grouping them as the core. And for those who don't know, I made a video way back saying I included Josh Hart as a part of the core. Um, so strictly from those guys standpoint of view. More emphasis on the big three. I don't think I need to say who the big three are, but that's kind of the basis or the format for this conversation. So let's start with this. What do they have? Lonzo, Zion, Josh Hart, and Brandon Ingram. Um, the tallest one is B.I. at 6'9". Um, maybe if you want to say he's 6'8", fine. But he's 6'9". Um, next is Zion and Zoe at 6'6". And then Josh Hart at 6'5". So right off the bat, they got a little bit of height in key places, but they're also undersized in other ones. Um, so how do they want to play? They want to play two brands of ball. They want to play tall ball and they want to play small ball. And there's a third one that is, I want. I don't want to say it's a hidden kind of ball, but it's another kind of ball I'm going to touch on. Maybe in this video, maybe another video, depending on how long it gets. Um, so why do they want to play small ball? Well, if you look at what they have, um, small ball, they have Zion, who is their power forward slash center at 6'6", six, six, which, by the way, I don't agree with him at center. Maybe in small ball lineup, sure, but even then, I'm not sure. I think I'd rather have someone maybe 6'9"-ish or something like that playing center. But you got him. You got B.I., who's long and lengthy. I think he's got like a 7-foot wingspan, but he's 6'9". Um, you got Zoe and, and, and Hart, who are tall for their positions. Here's the thing. If you're going to play small ball, you're not forfeiting size in the backcourt. You're going to have two guys in your backcourt, um, and maybe three if you want to include B.I., because B.I. could play some two-guard, too, maybe point. But you're going to have two guys in particular in your backcourt who are very defensively versatile, and right now I'm talking about Josh Hart and Zoe, and they can guard each other's man pretty well. Um, they're different kinds of defenders. Zoe can play. Zoe can defend in, as a team defender. He's a good help defender, and he's a good one-on-one -on -one defender. I think there were some questions on if he was a good one-on-one -on -one defender last year, but he's answered that this year for sure. He's definitely a good one-on-one -on -one defender. Josh Hart, um, I wouldn't necessarily call him a good team defender. I would say he's a very good on-ball defender, and he's a more, much more physical defender than I would say Zoe is. Um, the thing about Zoe, though, is Zoe has the ability to pick up someone full court. And I haven't too much seen that with anybody else on the roster unless they're pressing because they're behind and they're trying to, you know, trap and get turnovers and win the game. Um with that being said, they're not giving up a whole lot of size in that backcourt. And if other teams have to match them, even if they don't match them, but if they have to match them, they're going to have a distinct advantage being taller and bigger than most other backcourts in the league. You know, they're going to take advantage of matchups that aren't necessarily advantageous um, to most other teams if they try to play small ball. Um like, if you went and looked at the Warriors, their backcourt was Clay and Steph, and they kind of tried to shadow or hide Steph on defense, and they had a lot of um, Iggy and Clay guarding the best guards. And they still, there was in some cases where they would let Clay, I mean, Steph guard somebody one on one because they weren't as offensively gifted. 
and it will work itself out. Um, but they didn't have a, to a whole lot of size. Clay is like 6'6", six, six, or 6'5", six, and Steph is 6'3". You know, they're probably about what the league averages for heights at their position. Zoe is a tall point guard. He's 6'6". Six, six. He's really a shooting guard, you know, as far as stature is concerned. But he plays point guard, so he's got a just he's got an advantage against most point guards in the league. Now I'm not sure how long that's gonna last because the league is starting to draft big guards. You know, Luca, Ben, um, Therese Halliburton, you know, they're starting to get guys, Kay Cunningham, I think is what, six eight coming you know, so these guys are big. You know, that's going to be the new standard going forward, is having like tall guards. I know OG Ricky likes to talk about he doesn't like small guards um for his reasons and i'm not going to go into that but i agree with him in concept of uh the small guard versus big guard but that's one of the things lonzo's going to have that advantage going for you um in most matchups um if you want to put josh hart there josh hart is six five he's still got an advantage um it's good like if you're six 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 five you're guarding guys who are six two six three those extra three inches matter when you're trying to get your shot off over them. And they have the ability to cause havoc and affect backcourts in ways other guys don't. Even if you want to put B.I. there, you're only enhancing it because he's several inches taller. He's four inches taller than Josh Hart, and he's way longer. They're going to get the hands in passing lanes. They're going to deflect balls. They're going to put a whole lot of pressure on you defensively to want to, like, to, to get around them. You, you can see it now, and I've been consistent. Lakers trio Zion Center has been phenomenal in most games this year. Um, especially a lot of the games that they won, particularly in recent memory, that Celtics game, they went with that lineup. Lakers trio Zion, and they had Melly, and that's what worked for them. Um, having said that, that... They're, they're going to give up. They're not going to give up a whole lot of size, but one of the problems they're going to have, I think, is playmaking. And you're like, huh? They got so. Hear me out. Josh Hart in the ball handler on offense. He's not a good shooter from three. I'm going to be frank with you. He's, he's really not a good. He's really more of a slasher than anything. He's not much of a 3 and D guy. He's a slasher. When you have a backcourt like that, you're forcing Lonzo to take on a lot of the shooting burden by himself. And to some degree, he could do that. But Josh Hart isn't going to beat you shooting like you would want. You would want him to be like prime Danny Green shooting the ball. You would want him to be like, uh, shit, who's a good 3D guy currently in the league? Uh, Seth Curry, well, Seth don't play defense, but you want the shooting of someone like that from that position. He doesn't give you enough of it, so he's going to uh, he's gonna shrink the floor effectively because you'll be okay with Josh Hart for the most part taking jump shots. It's kind of like proving that you're, you're on your game today, which is going to put a lot of the onus on Zoe. Now, that shrinks the floor, which means that's going to limit passing lanes for Zoe. Zoe is going to have to carry the bulk of that duo. Now, if you play Brandon Ingram there, you make up for a lot of that. You got more shooting, more floor spacing, um, more passing, better defense overall. It's why I think ultimately, if you're smart, you're going to end up having to play B.I. at the two. A lot of people have envisioned it. I think uh, David Griffin mentioned it last year, which is the correct thing to do. That's why I think this team is going to be ultimately headed if they're going to play small ball, is they're going to have to put B.I. at the at the two. B.I. at the two is way big, way long. Shooting guards aren't, I wouldn't say that quick, but they're slow enough to where, or they're quick enough to where he can still contain them. Small forwards right now, guys like LeBron, KD, Paul George, they're too strong, they're too physical. They, Kawhi, they'll... Like, he just can't be us too, he's too light in the ass to keep up with him. I think if you put him at the two, his physical gifts will shine better. 
and he could still do what he does. And I think that ultimately would be the best backcourt combination for the Pelicans. And because they're so big, it's like you can't get... If you can stop the point of attack from both guards, you're doing your team a huge service in helping the defensive integrity of everybody else. If the two guys you got in the backcourt are hemming up everybody, you, you, you're doing yourself a, a great service. Now, again, that's what how I view this ain't anybody else. This is my thoughts. I don't mind Josh Hart being at the, at the two. It doesn't bother me as much. But he's got to get that shooting up. If he can't knock down shots, he's got to be at least 36, 37, preferably 37. If he gets to 37, erase everything I said. You know, I would still like him to work on passing, but I don't think they're ever going to have him do that. His job is basically going to be like shoot threes if they're open, play hard nose defense, attack the rack in transition if you get it, and rebound your ass off. That's his. That's his role pretty much on any team he's going to go to. Um. Now to Bi and Zion. I'm not going to include Zoe here, even though Zoe could play uh, small forward. Um, I have my reasons for that. I don't think that's going to be a long-term thing anyway. But we're going to go with B.I. and Zion here. Look, B.I., I kind of already gave you a breakdown on small forwards. He's going to be way too small in, in terms of weight. They're going to push him around, bully him. He'll be way too strong. Uh, in some cases, way too fast. I don't like him defensively at the three. I've never liked him defensively at the three. I like him better defensively at the two. Um, but he can still beat his guy offensively at the three. Now, if you're going to play small ball, you could play him at the four. He's played four last year. The difference with the four is he's already going to be beaten at power forward. Physically, but the problem is most of the power forwards in the league aren't that good. There's only like really two, and that's Zion and Giannis. And, you know, you might say, okay, well, what about AD? AD is a hybrid. He plays power forward. He plays center. It kind of depends. If you want to throw him in there, okay, fine. Um, I'm really struggling to think of another legit power forward that is that dude. Maybe Julius Randle. Um but I don't see a whole lot. Maybe Sabonis, I guess. But it's not a whole lot of guys. And even with Sabonis, he can he can lock down Sabonis defensively. I'm not worried about that. the the pro, The thing with with Bi is he's already got, he's not going to give you the defense anyway at that position. So he might as well just guard those guys. Now the difference is those are, those guys are a lot more physical, and so they're not going to be shifty. And he can kind of use his length to bother their shots. Um, but on the other side, they're going to have to keep up with him. They're going to have to move a lot more than they would like to at that position. And he's going to have the offensive skills to carve up pretty much most power forwards in the league. So the trade-off is he's going to give you, he's going to take away advantages on defense. Well, you don't have any advantages on defense, but he's going to give you offensive versatility and put, you got, put your offensive positions to win in ways that, you know, he could do maybe well basically i'm gonna put it this way he's gonna be bad defensively in either forward spot so you're not losing much but at least offensively he had a better chance of killing power forwards than he do small forwards now here's the other part to that you got zion you can play zion at the center which i don't agree with you can play him at power forward which is better or you can play him at uh small forward you know power forward small forward the problem is, no matter where you put Zion, he's going to struggle um, defensively against most of the league. He's not going to be fast enough to keep up with small forwards, and some of the power forwards are a little too fast for him, too. And they're taller. Especially when you start getting the guys like Robert Covington that can space the floor, Dario Saric, uh, those guys who don't need to actually do a whole lot of movement. Now, it may be easier for him to guard guys who just like to sit out there and just stand around and space the floor which helps your defense because he's not actually having to guard. But when he's when he's forced to guard anybody else that has some size out there, AD would carve him up. Um, and most of the other guys will carve him up in some way or another. I think he'll do a decent job on Sabonis. Um, I'm not sold on Sabonis offensively as most others are, but I think he's one of those guys who can do so much stuff that he's way too valuable. I don't think he has the offensive game yet, 
but he's got everything else. You know, he's baby Joker, as they say. But, you know, I think at the power forward, at the very least, those guys aren't that quick, and he could kind of use his strength to out-bully them. Um, but I don't see the advantages on either forward position for him defensively. Now, offensively, there's not a small forward in this league that wants him. There's not a one that wants him. Power forward, you could, I, I could see Julius Randle causing him some problems on the defensive end because Julius is strong and he's athletic enough. Um, AD is taller than him. Giannis is freakishly strong, but even he was bullying Giannis. So it just kind of depends on the team and how they're set up. Uh, I still think a big backcourt hurts or helps. Um, it helps you to have a bigger back, I mean, front court than uh, Zion. Because Zion, I think, has issues still. When you got two guys over you that's like seven foot, I think it's still asking a lot of him. Um, outside of that, that's pretty much it as far as the small ball. Now, with the only, okay, as a team, here's the issue with the small ball. They're going to give up so much size. If you want to counter them, you could counter them by going big if you have it. Like the Lakers could just counter them and start, be, uh, you know, LeBron at the point. It could play Kuzma, AD, uh, Montrez, and uh, KCP or something. And they'll, they could play with them and they'll play tall enough that it's like, okay, now what? You know, we'll just out physical you to death and there's nothing you can do about it. But there's not a lot of teams that could do that. If you got a dynamic center, that team they're gonna lose bad to dynamic centers. If you got a lot of size like the Orlando Magic, and I'm talking about fully healthy Orlando Magic, when you got Vucevic, um, Jonathan Isaac, and them guys like that, Aaron Gordon, I think they're going to be a problem. Um, the Miami Heat, I think, are a matchup problem too because they got the ability to play both tall ball or small ball, um, but. Small ball, I think, is going to benefit them because they really don't have a lot of size anyway. But they're going to have to be hitting on offense. I think the weak point is Josh Hart, and I would love to get an upgrade for Josh Hart. I don't know who that person is, but if you could get an upgrade for Josh Hart or if you could just get another legit wing and you can move B.I. there, I think this team has a high, high, high ceiling both on offense and defense even for the woes of B.I. and Zion. Now, tall ball. Tall ball is going to take Josh Hart out of the picture completely. You're going to have the backcourt of Zoe and B.I. I've kind of already touched on that. Um, I think offensively, a tall ball backcourt with them is going to probably be in the running for best backcourts, period. They're just going to have too much versatility. They're going to be able to do so much. You know, they can swap each other's roles at any point, and they're going to do a pretty good job. The only thing is I don't like B.I. guarding point guards. Now, if they're slow point guards or point guards that don't have uh, a lot of shiftiness, I don't mind B.I. on Steph Curry for a little bit. Because Steph Curry, he's, he's, to me, he's not super fast. He's shifty. But when you're shifty, he can get a hand on Steph. Steph is 6'3", he's 6'9". That's six additional inches to help, you know, deflect balls, get, you know, def, you know, get a hand in the shot, contest jump shots. You know, I think it works better for him if he's going against, like, older guards, slow guards, stuff like that. But against some of these younger guys, like, I would never want him on De'Aaron Fox or any of these other guys that's coming out that's like extremely athletic uh, and can attack in the cutters. But if you got guys who just want to sit around and shoot and maybe they don't bring a whole lot more than maybe offense, you know, I don't mind him guard Dame Lillard. Even if Dame Lillard tries to hit a step back, I think he's got enough range to contest very well. So I don't mind you know, if he gets switched on one of those guys. But some of these other guys who are way more athletic and shifty, nah. Mm -mm. But overall, I think it's better for their, for them um, in the future because who's going to compete with them in size back there? You know, Philly got Ben Simmons, who is a direct counter to 
the small ball lineup, but then he's got Seth Curry. And I don't mind just leaving B.I. on Seth the entire game. I think he can guard him. Now, there's not going to be an answer for Ben Simmons, which is why he's going to be a complete counter. But you're only going to see them how often? You know what I'm saying? There's not too many other guys in the league. You know, even with like Luka, Luka's not one of them athletic guys, so I don't mind B.I. on him. But Luka can get physical with him. And I'm not sure if B.I. can out-muscle Luka. I'm not sure if he's going to be willing to be physical with him all game. That's my only concern. Lonzo, Lonzo will play him tight. He'll play him smart. He'll take away his space. He, I, I trust Lonzo more, even though he got carved up recently. But I would still think I would, I think I would let, I'd be okay with B.I. If B.I. took that matchup, I, I think I'd be okay. Even though I guess you can call Luka a small four like LeBron. But you got to play the position or the person at the position. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. If we're playing tall ball, we put those there. That means we only got Zion. And you guessed it. Zion is short. He's 6'6". Six, six. He's going to be undersized at either forward spot no matter what. And he's damn sure going to be undersized at center. That's the problem with the tall ball lineup. You just don't have enough size. You really don't have the players. They can't play tall ball this year. Ultimately... They're going to want to get some other wings that have some skills. And you go, you can play Zion at the four. And he'll be like your only weak point on the defense. But then you got guys who are able to switch and guard all five. And quite frankly, they're going to, you're going to want the, you want those guys are going to beat you out the, out the gym. If it were up to me, I would want guys like Jonathan Isaac, who's 6'9", 6'10", who can play both positions. I'm not saying go get Jonathan Isaac because they're not going to let him go. Jonathan Isaac is like who they're building around. But I would want guys like Jonathan Isaac. One, he could guard pretty much every position on the court. But in particular, he can fill in whatever Zion can't do. If he guards the small forwards, which is technically his position, he's really oversized, which is what you want with tall ball. You want so much size that you can't, basically you're trying to beat backcourts. You're trying to beat smaller backcourts in submission. And you want to force teams to have to go slow and big to, to fight you, which is where you're going to kill them by just beating them up with speed anyway. If you get someone, I'm not, and I'm, again, I'm just using these guys to give you a frame of rest, reference of what I'm talking about. You get a Jonathan Isaac that's 6'10", and he's got a guard Paul George. You know, that he's, he's got like two or three inches on PG. And he's long. He's got like a 7'3", wingspan, something ridiculous. Like, dude, is, like genetic-wise, he's ridiculous. You want something like that. You want to be able to take away as many options as possible. But if you ever... Find a small fort that isn't that good and you want to stick Zion on him. Maybe he's a floor spacer. Cool. Now you can go put Jonathan Isaac on the power forward. And, you know, it, that matchup isn't bad. Jonathan Isaac can guard all five. You know, or you might want a guy like Bam out of Bayou at center. And I know there's not a bunch of Bams. Athletic and all this, but Bam is, Bam is 6'9". Bam is actually undersized. But Bam is capable of guarding all five. The only thing I hate about Bam on defense is his 6'9 shows up against like the marquee centers. Joker, Embiid, anybody else who's a big time center, like actually can score or can, you know, have, you can run an offense through, they're going to be a problem for Bam. And that's where you're going to want your guy to be like a 7'1, 7'2, 7'3. You know, maybe play Jackson Hayes there if Jackson Hayes gets his act together. But, you know, if you're going to play this tall ball thing, think about this lineup, though. You got 6'6", Zoe, 6'9", B.I. You got uh, Zion, who's 6'6". So that's going to be your weak point on defense. You can't hide him or cover for him. You just have to find somebody out there that he can deal with and try to play and tell him, look, man, you got to play ball denial. That's your game on defense, ball denial. Do not let them get the ball so you don't have to defend them. Defend them before they get the ball. Um, 
get your guy like Jonathan Isaac, 6'10", who can sw or 6'9", something. They, they got to be able to guard basically 2 through 4. If they guard 2 through 4, you're good. You're good. And then that way you can play off of whatever you need. If you got to switch for whatever reason, you know, that guy can cover and can guard whoever. You need that guy to be able to space the floor. He needs to be able to guard 2 through 4. And then finally, your center, you prefer him to be someone around 7 foot, 7 foot 3, legit so that you have an actual advantage on the court and you're actually physically dominating teams. And you kind of want them, if because I didn't talk about skill set. With the center, I want them to be an old school center like Jaleel Okafor, if I'm being honest. Would I want Jaleel on defense? Absolutely not. But I want someone who I could just dump the ball into and we can get the switch and the pick and roll, which is everybody clear out, give it to him and let him beat him up all the game, all game. And then you got to force the defense to play up to you. So they either got to get off their guards or they're going to have to try to pre-switch the switch and you can take advantage of that in different other ways. You can exploit that, you know, various different ways. Now, tall ball team, here's the thing. There's only... There's only... I'm struggling to think of another team. There's only three teams that can truly play tall ball. That's the Lakers, Philly... In Orlando, because they actually have the size. Um, everybody else is not prepared to guard tall ball. Well, I take it back. Add Denver, because Denver got Bobo and all these other guys too. But they're, I think their smallest guys like six nine. I'm trying to remember what the team they ran in a bubble. That's because I think they had the the smallest guy they had was like six nine or six ten. Everybody else was like, they had like three guys on the court uh, the court that were like seven feet plus, which was insane. Um, and they legit had Joker running point guard. They could run you that way, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you right now, the only teams is just the Lakers, Philly, and Orlando because they have the bodies. N you know, Vucevic, Gordon, Isaac alone is, is enough. We're not even getting into the guards. And Markel Fultz is 6'5". I'm not going to get into, you know, the pins and needles of that. Philly got Ben Simmons at point guard. I already said he's a counter pick no matter what. It doesn't matter if they go tall ball or small ball. Ben Simmons is a counter. Okay, you can play him at center. You can play him at point guard. You can play him all over the court defensively. And he is going to be a problem. Period. And they got a couple other pieces here and there. Tobias Harris is kind of big. They're obviously Joel Embiid. Uh, even if they tried to play. Like, really, they, their advantage is not to play small ball. If they, if they could, they would really like to have Lonzo and, like, a, a Josh Hart. Because at that point, you got Lonzo, Josh Hart, Ben Simmons, uh, Tobias Harris, and Embiid. They can play tall ball the entire game. And, and small teams just ain't going to be able to beat them. It's just got too much size. Lonzo pass over everybody. Ben Simmons pass over everybody. Good game. Ben Simmons got the ball. Floor space. Good game. You get a ball to Joel and beat against. Good game. It, they, that's what they want. They would much rather have a Lonzo and a Josh Hart. I'm not saying they need to trade for them. But I'm talking about that's kind of what I would envision they would need to like bring that team to like full power, full potential. Um, the Lakers, they could play either way. They got enough bodies. They could play small ball. And they're going to have LeBron and AD in any lineup regardless. So it's just a matter of, okay, do we play Trez? Or do we play AD at the five? Okay, or, you know, how are we going to do this? KCP is going to be in the game. And maybe you probably play Dennis Schroeder. So you got, no matter what, you might have Dennis Schroeder, KCP, LeBron, and AD. And then the other one just depends. You know, there's some some lineups where you're going to want to play Kuzma. There's other lineups where you're going to want to play Marc Gasol. You know, some lineups you're going to want to play Trez. You really don't want Trez playing anything outside of really, I guess, power forward or center. So it depends. But and he's so versatile. He can play. He can pretty much play the three through five at any time. So they got so much versatility. They could counter anything that pretty much the the, uh, the the Pelicans would want to do. Here's the other one. Brooklyn just got 
Blake. And we don't necessarily know what they're going to be yet or how they're going to play with them. You could carve them up defensively because they don't guard, but their small ball is going to be exposed. And they're, they're tall. They can play tall ball, but they'll be exposed either way unless they play it while Kyrie is on the bench. You know, uh, Harden is 6'5", so he can give you some of that size at point guard because that's what he's playing anyway. But you're going to lose a lot of it with Kyrie because Kyrie's like 6'2", 6'3", anyway. Um, that would be the other team, but I don't trust them defensively, especially with Blake now. Um, so that's my synopsis. But there's, I can't think of any other team other than those four, Orlando, Denver, uh, Philly, the Lakers, and if you want to throw in Brooklyn, that actually want to play a team like the Pelicans that can shift both ways. The Lakers and Philly are, are the counterpick. They are the de facto counterpick. No matter what you do with those guys, unless you go get some supreme talent, they're going to have an answer for you, period. The Lakers won't last that much longer because LeBron is coming down. Yes, he is on the decline. I don't care what anybody says. He is declining. Um. So they may not have to deal with that much longer, but the other teams are going to be around for a while. Um. But yeah, that's ultimately my viewpoint. I can't wait to see what this becomes if they decide to keep Zoe. You know, if they don't, oh, well, you throw this shit out the window. But even still, I think with Zoe teams, that's kind of what you want for Zoe. You want guys who can play small ball or tall ball, and it'll work for you either way. Hell, they beat the Celtics because they went small ball. And they won. They just outdid them. Their backcourt was just bigger and more lengthy, and they didn't have an answer for Zion, and they didn't have an answer for B.I., and it didn't matter what Melly's deficiencies was. He just played smart defense, and that was it. He spaced the floor. That's all they needed. That was all they needed. And this stuff has become more prevalent or relevant to me just watching games. They need a shot block at center. They also need a small ball five. They don't really have either. That's what they're missing, and another wing or two that can actually space the floor and can, can get, get another wing that can get B.I. playing the two more. That's pretty much what they're lacking. But anyway, that's all I got. Y'all have a good one. Peace.